The Suez Canal is one of the world's busiest maritime channels. It links the North Atlantic to Asia via the Mediterranean Sea, to the Red Sea, and then to the Indian Ocean. The Suez Canal plays a crucial role in the international oil trade, with tankers going to and from the Middle East to Asia, Europe, and North America. The canal runs about 190 kilometers through Egypt, starting in the north from the Mediterranean at Port Said and running down to the Gulf of Suez in the Red Sea. These days, the Suez Canal is managed and operated by the Egyptian government through the Suez Canal Authority. Its annual revenue is estimated to be around $5 billion, and it accounts for almost 10% of the world's seaborne trade. Prior to the canal's construction, the most common way for Europe to India and Asia was via the Cape of Good Hope in Africa. The Suez Gateway halved this travel time. Understandably, this meant that whoever controlled the Suez Canal stood to gain significant advantages. However, the canal wasn't always under Egyptian control, despite being built by the Egyptians in Egypt. From its completion in 1869 until 1956, the Suez was largely run by the British and the French. Britain and France's shareholders owned the majority of the prized Suez Canal Company, and it was very reluctantly relinquished. More of that soon. First, let's check the facts and history behind this all-important waterway. From ancient times, people had always been looking for a way to link the Mediterranean and the Red Seas. It was thought impossible, and land-bound journeys were the most common means of transporting goods between the regions. Canals were built linking the Red Sea to the Nile River, which then joined the Mediterranean. However, they were on a very small scale. Britain and France had a very vested interest in Egypt due to its access to their colonies. By the mid-19th century, French engineers had come up with a plan to begin a canal at Port Said. A negotiation was made with Egypt to create a company that would take care of the canal's construction. The Suez Canal Company was formed with French shareholders sharing the stakes with the Egyptian government. Britain was initially vigorously opposed to the project, as the British saw it as a French attempt to undermine Britain's stronghold on global shipping. Nevertheless, construction began on the Suez Canal in 1859 under the supervision of the French developer Ferdinand de la Soupes. Egypt supplied the majority of laborers who were forced to work in trying conditions. Often at the risk of disease outbreaks, uprisings were pretty common and progress was slow. It wasn't until the much needed technology was introduced that the canal was finally completed. Dredgers and shovels powered by steam were brought in to replace manual labor, and in 1869, the Suez Canal was ready to go. Over the 10-year period, one and a half million people had worked on the construction. The initial budget was estimated to be around $50 million, but this had been doubled upon completion. However, the new channel for sea routes began to dramatically change world trades. By opening up a direct link from the North Atlantic to the Indian Ocean, the Suez Canal had cut about 7,000 kilometers off the traditional path via the southern tip of Africa. Britain was a major beneficiary as this meant faster and more direct access to its colonies and the oil fields in the Middle East. By the 1870s, though, Egypt's economy was in tatters. The country was in massive debt and they were unable to repay their loans. Much of this was due to the American Civil War, which slowed down the American cotton production. The global price of cotton skyrocketed, which was a huge boost for Egypt's cotton exports. Encouraged by the short-term economic gain, the Egyptian government began to borrow heavily against its means from European banks. When the cotton trade returned to normal after the Civil War, the Egyptian economy took a battering. The country has accumulated debts of 100 million pounds on the watch of its ruler Khedif Ismail Pasha. In 1875, Britain seized its opportunity and rushed to take advantage. To partially alleviate their debt, Britain bought out Egypt's share in the Suez Canal Company and became the controlling shareholder. The British also snapped up other key Egyptian infrastructure, such as irrigation, cotton fields, and railways. This incensed many Egyptians, particularly those in officer classes who resented being underpaid and exploited, as most would. Ahmad Urabi was one such figure who led an uprising against the rule of Khedive Pasha. In 1881, Urabi had commanded enough power to force a change in the government. Britain, in turn, perceived an Egyptian nationalist government as a threat to its control and investment in the Suez Canal. In 1882, British forces stepped in to intervene, leading to the Anglo-Egyptian War. Despite fierce resistance, Britain was able to quickly establish its dominance and Urabi was overthrown. He left Egypt to live in exile. However, his actions were to inspire future Egyptian leaders, most notably future president Gamal Nasser and so to begin the British occupation of Egypt, which lasted throughout the two world wars, and finally came to an end in 1952. While Egypt was technically still a part of the Ottoman Empire, it was now effectively under British occupation. 
The Suez Canal was a key focus of defense during World War I, with British and Allied forces being thrust into the region to ensure its protection. After World War I, Britain decided that a pro-British Egyptian government would be acceptable for continued control of the Suez. In 1922, its protectorate rule was abolished and Egypt was granted independence. This still meant a heavy British presence in Egypt as the control of the Suez Canal remained an integral part of British and French economic power. Things began to change after World War II, though. America had become a rising superpower and oil had become an increasingly precious resource. Then began a series of events that led to Britain not only losing control of the Suez Canal, but also ending its dominance on the world stage. 1952 saw the Egyptian Revolution, which brought Gamal Nasser to power. Nasser was keen to free Egypt from occupying foreign powers. He also saw the creation of Israel as an immediate threat. Israel and Egypt had been involved in a series of disputes around the Egypt-controlled Gaza area. And the United States had close ties to Israel and was reluctant to offer Egypt support. As a result, Nasser sought to build a relationship with the Soviet Union. This led to the US and Britain withdrawing their offer to help finance the Aswan Dam. The dam was one of Nasser's plans to help modernize Egypt. Angered, Nasser decided to nationalize the Suez Canal, which meant British and France had lost all control. All shareholders were to be reimbursed and Egypt would now assume complete control of this crucial waterway. Britain and France were absolutely furious and concerned that Nasser would cut their access to the canal, including oil supply lines. In 1956, British and France had then enlisted Israel's help and invaded Egypt, leading to the Suez Crisis. America strongly opposed this invasion. The US reasoned that such an act would push Egypt closer to the Soviet Union. America wanted to build stability and form relationships in the Middle East. World opinion turned against Britain and France as the invasion seemed illegal and immoral. America threatened economic sanctions, and Britain, France, and Israel withdrew their forces. Britain lost over $280 million in the invasion and made the pound plummet. It was the beginning of Britain's end as the influential world power and America's rise as a true governing force. Today, the Suez Canal is controlled by Egypt's Suez Canal Authority, and with the 2022 projected to bring in $7 billion in revenue, the Suez Canal is a crucial part of Egypt's economy. Despite its tumultuous history, it remains one of the world's most important marine pathways.